I'm Scott L. Miller. It is the 17th of April, 2023. This is my vlog of daily life living in Nicaragua, and today I'm going to answer a viewer question. Why do you want to live there? Right after the bump. I'm going to be going through the seven main reasons why we chose Nicaragua. But before I get to that, I want to give you a little bit of background. I started living abroad. I traveled heavily prior to 2015, but in 2015, my family and I began living abroad. We started in Spain and then Panama and came to Nicaragua pretty early on in our long-term looking abroad kind of investigation of where we would eventually want to settle. I'm standing in weeds and they're poking me in the legs. Uh, and so I have experience with Ni Nicaragua firsthand going back about eight years at this point. So Nicaragua was not new when we made the decision to come back, but I did live in Latin America before Nicaragua and we lived in Europe both before and after living in Nicaragua in the past. This gave us a bit of scope and an understanding of Nicaragua that allowed us to really do a lot of decision making and we didn't just look from abroad and say, well, we looked at a bunch of countries, looked at a bunch of factors and just decided on Nicaragua. We did a lot of research and a lot of firsthand moving around the world to experience not just what places are like and what's good and bad, but to also get our personal feel for it. And that's an important aspect of moving somewhere. You can empirically find a lot of factors that apply to a given country. It is uh, located in a certain place, it has the right daylight that you want, it has the right uh, climate, whatever, and then when you get there you simply decide that you don't like the mood at restaurants, you don't like the style of music that they play, you don't like the way that people drive, and you suddenly discover it's the wrong place for you even though on paper it seemed awfully perfect. That's easy to have happen. So it's important to remember that on one side you have your pros and cons, your empirical and logic list, and then there's an emotional element. I think your logic list is perfect for ruling out the countries that don't make sense for you no matter how much you like them. Right? You can absolutely fall in love with Barcelona, Spain. Say it's the perfect city, the most beautiful place you've ever been, but the day-to-day -day realities of living there may not be something you actually like. The cost of living may be too high, maybe there aren't enough jobs, whatever, and you really shouldn't live in Barcelona even though you love it. But there may be another place that on paper is perfect, but when you get there, you don't like. So ruling out places that simply won't make sense, that's what the first list is for then you need to take those places that meet your criteria in some good way and make some emotional decisions beyond that. See what it's really like and how those logical decisions apply to you personally. I'm gonna to try to talk about both here, but uh, our list, my seven item list, certainly is about what we use to rule out many other countries that left Nicaragua as one of our key options. Okay, first up at number seven is my ability to work. Now, I, at the time we moved, I was 45, I'm now 47, and I'm not at a point where I'm quite ready to retire. Technically, I did retire in the past, and a bunch of life events brought me back to working. So I work from here in Nicaragua. I work for a U.S. company. I do regular, the type of work you would do in the United States, and I'm paid in the United States. So it is important that we found a country that would allow me to do that, uh, but not one that necessarily provided me a way to work in the country. Now, most countries that we would reasonably look at, and reasonably most in the world, will allow you to work abroad, but some make it easier than others. Nicaragua makes it as easy as anyone does. It is the absolute easiest country, or equal to the easiest countries uh, for you to work in if you're going to be, like me, a digital nomad and doing your work somewhere else. So if you have foreign earned income, that makes Nicaragua at the top of the list for this specific item. And for a lot of people, that's a big deal. And this applies beyond just those 
who are working, but also those who are pulling a pension or those who have other type of possibly varied retirement strategies, Nicaragua doesn't care what type of retirement strategy you have or if it's an active work abroad situation. They treat them all the same and basically they act like they don't exist. Your money is your money and they don't get involved in the taxation of it, nor do they get involved in the creation of it. So you are really given the freedom to do whatever makes sense for you from a working perspective. Now, for a lot of people, that may not matter at all. If you're independently wealthy or you plan to work in the country that you're going to, this factor isn't one that will matter to you, but another factor will, such as the ability to get and maintain a job, get a work visa, and so forth. We love Nicaragua for us because none of us need anything but a tourist visa in order to be here and do the things that we need to do, whether it's buy a house, run a business locally, or work abroad like I do. All of those things are completely possible with no questions asked under the standard tourist visa that you get automatically. That is a difficult one to actually eliminate too many countries, but it does give Nicaragua a slight edge up over anywhere else that we were considering. Now, where were we considering? We have a pretty broad range, and in some ways we would have considered anywhere on Earth, but realistically Latin America and Europe are the primary places that we would consider. We would also play around with Southeast Asia, New Zealand, uh, the Philippines. There's lots of places that would hit our radar as viable, but as we go through my list, I think you'll see why we're able to eliminate a lot of them pretty quickly and use some of these factors all at once to make the process pretty quick. But leading on our seventh item, while a minor overall point, Nicaragua really did shine in the ability to work from their uh, factor. Coming in at number six, our next big factor is language. Now, this one is a little bit difficult, but we had a number of language desires that we were really looking for. We wanted to live in a country that did not speak English. We wanted to raise our children bilingually in a place that would more or less force them to be exposed to and work to learn, at least casually, another language. But we wanted a language that was relatively easy for us to learn and would be generally useful to learn, both for for us as the adults and the children later in life. We wanted to give them more options. And Spanish was naturally at the top of our list. Both my wife and I have high school Spanish and have studied it some uh, before moving to Nicaragua and in our living abroad. Three of the countries that we have lived in uh, previously were Spanish speaking and we are originally from the United States where Spanish is the secondary language. So Spanish automatically played a very big role and we had a big advantage in it. But that being said, we've lived in Italy as well, and I did take the time to learn Italian quite a bit, and Italian would also work really well. Uh, basically, the Romance languages, such as French or Portuguese or even Romanian, uh, along with Spanish and Italian, all made for top-tier language choices for us, along with the Germanic languages, such as German or Dutch or the Nordic languages. All of those were our first choice, but we'd be willing to look further afield, places like Greece or the Slavic countries like the Czech Republic or Bosnia, they would be options in language, but far harder and reasonably less useful than learning one of the Romance or Germanic languages. We didn't want to go to someplace like the Netherlands because Dutch is spoken so little there and so much English is spoken. It would simply become another place to speak English, and yes, you would hear Dutch from time to time, but it wouldn't force any of us to take the time to learn Dutch. We would end up just naturally remaining English speakers. Uh, so we had a large range of potential countries to look for, but that eliminated a lot of places such as Southeast Asia or the Five Eyes countries such as Australia, New Zealand, Canada, and so forth. Even though all those places may be really nice, may be more affordable than back home or whatever, they didn't meet our language desires. We did not 100% rule out most any country based on this, but it certainly narrowed what we were reasonably looking for so that we would have the option and the hopeful pressure to become uh, more free linguistically, to actually fully learn another language, to be able to live our lives in another language and open up a part of the world through that. And my long-term hope is that uh, both myself and my children will become multilingual, not bilingual. That's a very hard road for me personally. I find learning languages quite difficult. 
Um, but uh, living here and being immersive in Spanish every day certainly helps. My Spanish is worlds better today than it was last year, let alone 2015, let alone high school. My high school Spanish teacher would be very impressed with my ability to speak Spanish now, especially with how terrible I was in high school and that I live full time in a Spanish speaking country. Uh, I have learned Italian almost as well as I speak Spanish today. Uh, that I have lost heavily, but if I spend time in Italy, it will come back very quickly. Uh, my hope is that we will have enough time living abroad and I will get better and better at learning languages that I will at least be able to get my Italian back and possibly pick up at least semi passable Portuguese. I have no expectation of ever being able to speak uh, Portuguese or French or anything like that with any amount of uh, fluidity, but if I'm able to read and get by in those countries, uh, that would be awfully nice. If I could speak Spanish and Italian enough to carry on comfortable conversations, I would be extremely happy. Spanish, I suspect in time, will become my predominant language, but that is a long road to go down. Uh, we are working towards it. Uh, my wife has accelerated past me quite a bit. She finds languages much easier. Uh, she finds the rules of language harder, but the actual learning a language easier, so her spoken Spanish is ahead of mine. My vocabulary remains ahead of hers, but that is something we are both working on heavily and both notice massive improvements in how we speak and hear. And as that happens, our interaction with the environment around us improves so much. Every time you learn more of the local language, we become more a part of the community. People see us differently, like just our interactions with people and our ability to make and retain friends and hang out and do activities get stronger and stronger. So that's a really important factor. If we were living in, say, Poland, while a lot of people would speak English with us, that would defeat the purpose and it would make us more of outsiders. Whereas here, while we're clearly outsiders and will always be, uh, because we're taking the time to learn the language, because we do many local activities, and because we've been here long enough that people are beginning to uh, see us as long-term residents, the behavior of people around us is not to make us part of the inherent local native social circles, but we are becoming much more accepted and running in circles that are very different than what you would get as a tourist or as someone newly re relocating down. So that's been important and was a big factor in our choosing of what country made sense. Coming in at number five, is the ocean. Now, lots of countries have the ocean, but Nicaragua has exceptionally beautiful Pacific Ocean waterfront and a lot of available space on the ocean. When we were looking at and discussing places that we wanted to potentially move, and I have the, cam the camera facing the ocean, it's, uh, it's out there a ways, but only it's walking distance away. Um, I'm not on the ocean today, so I can't show it to you, but I do have this beautiful view of the tree and the sun getting low and the hills. So I decided to show this to you instead. This is a gorgeous afternoon here in Leon. Uh, when we were talking about where we wanted to move abroad, the discussion was always halted at we couldn't find a place that we really, really, really fell in love with. And the key to getting my wife to make the leap to decide to give up our home in the United States and move somewhere else as our main home base was based on, but we could live on the ocean. And her reaction was, wait, we could live on the ocean? Let's make that happen. And so that really opened up a lot of options for us and, and triggered our uh, being able to move quite quickly. Uh, for her, obviously, ocean was a little bit more flexible than just ocean. Had we found a place on the Mediterranean, for example, or the Black Sea, those would have been completely acceptable as well. Very large ocean-like body of water is really more of what our requirement was, but something where we could have a beach, not necessarily surf, but a place where you can swim and listen to the waves and see the sunset over the water or rise over the water or whatever. Uh, we had a slight preference for the Pacific over the Atlantic, uh, partially because we were uh, raised near the Atlantic and that's what we're used to from back home. If we were in Europe, we would like the Atlantic a lot, but having sunsets over the ocean is slightly preferable for us than having sunrises over the ocean. Of course, Panama has the beauty of being able to offer both. That is something that's really nice there and we did like a lot when that's where we lived, but, sorry for the wind, 
uh, but Nicaragua, uh, along with many other Latin American countries and several uh, European countries, offered the waterfront options that we were looking for. But Nicaragua has some of the most available waterfront uh, anywhere in Latin America, at least warm waterfront, right, without getting uh, down to southern Argentina or whatever. Uh, and so that was another big vote in Nicaragua's favor, but certainly didn't put Nicaragua as the top on our list. Nearly every country in Latin America has uh, some really great waterfront options. So Ecuador, Peru, Chile, Argentina, Mexico, Guatemala, El Salvador, Honduras, they all meet this criteria. So it didn't really narrow things down dramatically, but Nicaragua did have excellent waterfront that was widely available. So a benefit as well. At number four, safety. Now, we've lived in a lot of places around the world, including some pretty dangerous ones in the United States, such as Newark, New Jersey, uh, Washington, D.C., Dallas, Texas, Rochester, New York, uh, Flint, Michigan, and we understand that places can be pretty dangerous and yet you can be quite safe through behavior. So there aren't too many places that we are really looking to rule out because of safety, but right now, uh, the Northern Triangle and Mexico do have some crime problems and that did make them a little bit less desirable from a safety perspective. Not that I would uh, worry dramatically about living there, but we do have small children. Or they're a little bit older now. They were pretty small when we first moved. And without spending a lot of time in, say, Guatemala, Honduras, El Salvador, or Mexico, uh, there is a fear that we may not know what exactly is or isn't safe. Uh, we may be learning uh, a bit on the ground, which is not desirable when you have kids. If it was just me or just me and my wife, we would go to any of those countries sight unseen and worry about the safety factors later and figure it out. Really, any country in the world more or less you can live in safely if you know what you're doing so that is not so much a national level issue to be concerned about but it is a big factor when you have kids and for some people even when you don't uh, but given the places that we've lived and what we've lived through we'd be willing to to take the time to learn what safety is like in different places and figure it out but nicaragua does shine with the best safety in this particular region by no small degree and as we're talking about on some other videos some of the best safety in the entirety of the western hemisphere now i am going to be working on a video series or, or a few videos uh, specifically about that because some people have asked questions when we first moved down again in 2021 i was here in 2015 2019 and then we made the final move on our second trip in 2021, uh, but we did live here previously in 2015. Um, at that time, the stats we were seeing is that Nicaragua had just passed Canada as the safest country in the Western Hemisphere uh, because Canada had become more dangerous due to the incredible rise of domestic violence caused by the COVID lockdown measures. So many people were trapped in their homes, raising the prospects of domestic violence through stress and panic and uh, enclosed spaces uh, makes a lot of people, so many uh, couples were going at each other, you know, emotionally arguing, whatever, because they were in that trap situation, uh, that was a really dangerous thing. And then you combine that with uh, the, the loss of jobs, the uncertainty about the future and the often illegality of mostly women, but not always, not having the legal right to go out and try to escape uh, because they were in lockdown. And so, so much domestic violence arose in the North because they were doing those types of lockdown measures. Uh, those countries really saw a huge uptick in violence through domestic violence alone. They also saw some decreases in other areas because people weren't out and about down here in Nicaragua, there was no lockdown. That never happened. So that change in domestic violence never happened either. It stayed the course. And whether that was good or bad from a COVID and pandemic perspective is a completely different discussion. But from a violence perspective, Nicaragua was able to uh, remain at its low level somewhere around 4.7 homicides uh, per 100,000 people. But that's not the, the main statistic is the violent crime, which is very, very difficult to track down, which is why I'm going to be doing a show specifically to break down uh, violent crime numbers and kind of show how as and this is important, I think, as travelers, as relocators, as expats or potential expats, how we can evaluate countries around the world uh, when we're looking at moving, because there's so many factors that we have to consider and simply looking at how many violent crimes, how many homicides or whatever really is kind of a meaningless number that won't get us very far. Uh, and so we need to be able to read into it. 
just looking at the numbers, Nicaragua is great, but there's so much more to look into. And uh, it's no longer the safest, but it's still incredibly safe and a really great option in that regards. At number three, we come in with time zone. This is a bigger deal than I think a lot of people realize when they're first looking at becoming an expat. And for some people, it doesn't matter. For other people, it's really critical. So I'll explain why it's important for us. All of our family and our clients, our work that we do for all of us in the family are in the United States, spread between the Eastern time zone and the mountain time zone with the majority of our family and work in central time. Nicaragua for the majority of the year are, is in line with the United States Central Time Zone. Central American time is the same as Central Time in the U.S., except for when the U.S. goes to Daylight Savings Time, then it's off by just one hour. And uh, Mountain Time in the U.S. shifts to the east and ends up lining up with Central America instead. But that works really well that the majority of our family is within an hour of us most of the year and within two hours of us all of the year. That means that being able to talk to and, and do things with family is easy. Being able to talk to clients uh, and work with vendors is easy. We don't have to really worry about getting up super early or super late. When I worked in Europe for a number of years, I always had to deal with working at really late hours. And that was fine for the time that we lived there, but it was not ideal. A lot of that time I was a writer, so the flexibility let me shift my hours a bit and it didn't end up being too bad. But if I had to work full time all the time and knew it was never going to end, that would be kind of awful. And living in Nicaragua prevents that. I know that I get to work my normal hours forever until I'm ready to retire or whatever. But that's really important for those of us who need to work or those who need to interact with family. So it's something to think about. For you, it may not matter at all. And maybe you want to distance yourself from the United States or wherever you're from and have a time zone that's really far off because it naturally disassociates you or you simply like being in line with other regions for, for other reasons. But for us, having a time zone that is close to family and close to work is a huge benefit and we predominantly ruled out Europe for that reason more than any other. Uh, that's a big factor because uh, many places in Europe we have lived in are very high on our list for consideration otherwise. If it wasn't for this factor, Spain easily would have been our number one choice, with Italy and Greece being very close secondary choices and Romania coming in just a little bit behind those. Spain and Italy having huge language advantages, uh, Greece having a big language disadvantage, Romania falling a little bit in the middle, Romania lacking the ocean. For the most part, it does have a tiny bit of uh, Black Sea waterfront, but not in the regions that we really like. In Romania, Greece having tons and tons of waterfront, uh, and us having lived in all of those, all of them were so wonderful that they fell well within consideration, along with several other places in the Balkans. My wife specifically really liked Sarajevo in Bosnia, and I really liked Pristina in Kosovo as examples, and the waterfront in Montenegro is absolutely fantastic along the Adriatic. So we had a lot of options and a lot of places that we considered very strongly for different reasons, but time zone is big, and not just for me, for the kids to be able to hang out with their friends from back home and to talk to family and to be able to just interact more naturally, it makes us feel like we really didn't move that far away. We spent much of our lives living in New York with family in Texas or living in Texas with family in New York. When we did, did live in Texas, most of our family was in Houston, but we lived in Dallas. And so we're used to the time zones being a thing that really connects us together, and we didn't want to give that up. So that pretty much limited us to Latin America as our primary options. Once you take the, the factors that we've given so far, time zone and ocean front and uh, safety and uh, all those things, that really shifts us into that zone pretty effectively. So Latin America, by this point in our list, really became our choice. At number two, and this is big for most everyone, is cost of living. Most of Latin America is very affordable. So if you're only looking at a cost savings over most of your home countries, then Latin America is going to be a giant open wonderland of options. But if you're looking for the extreme cases of the absolute best cost of living, mostly you're gonna end up with Central America being right at the top of that list and Nicaragua being at the top of that list. Nicaragua is most likely, although this is difficult to actually ascertain, but is almost certainly the most cost-effective country, at least over the long term, in all of Latin America. 
It is very cheap to live, very cheap to eat, very cheap for transport and flights to places, very cheap for uh, the way that taxes are handled, uh, and very cheap for services, and very cheap for housing. Um, even uh, power and other things, just it's not expensive in any regards. So that's a really big factor. Simply your money goes further, and the thing that matters there is that the further your money goes means the, the less you have to work extra hard to cover your expenses. And as an expat, as a digital nomad, often that's pretty important because you want to be able to enjoy the place that you're in. And if you spend all of your time working, that becomes a lot more difficult. So that did a lot to push Nicaragua higher on the list than a lot of its neighbors. Uh, of course, Guatemala, El Salvador, Honduras, they're quite affordable. Mexico is not very far behind, but it does make Panama and Costa Rica a lot less attractive. Panama a little less and Costa Rica a lot less. The cost of living difference between here in Nicaragua and in Costa Rica is dramatic. From here going north until you hit the United States, every country falls well within what I would consider a similarly affordable range. Even Mexico, where their general income and buying power is much, much higher, but there are so many regions to pick from, you can get very cost effective because Mexico is such a large country, you have that disparity to, to uh, choose what you want. In places like Guatemala, it's simply a general lower cost, more closely associated with Nicaragua, but it does have some higher expenses uh, here and there. So you will get the absolute best value for your money here in Nicaragua, but it's only a little bit different going north. But going south, it that pretty much ruled out Panama and Costa Rica for us because we didn't want to be tied to such high cost areas. We have lived in Panama previously, as I have stated, and we absolutely loved Panama and it was what encouraged us to move to Latin America in the first place. So we have a lot of um, tender feelings towards Panama. And if I had to live there, I would be very, very happy as a wonderful country that I really care about. But uh, our ability to live here in Nicaragua, we just get so much more. And it, the more that we get for our money translates into the more that we're able to relax, the more we're able to go out, the more we're able to enjoy Nicaragua, rather than as we often did in Panama, simply having a nice apartment, staying at home and watching television because it was expensive to go out or more difficult to go out. And just having that, that higher cost of living doesn't just mean that we don't go out as much, it means everyone else doesn't either. And so the whole culture of going out and doing things is much lower in Panama than it is in Nicaragua. In Nicaragua, even though people are generally quite poor compared to other regions, this is the second poorest country in the Western Hemisphere and the poorest on the continent itself, yet people are able to afford to go out all the time. That's a really big deal. And so nightlife and everything is very lively because of that. And at number one, our absolute top factor that drove us to Nicaragua is location. Now, Lots of other countries have great locations, and I could argue that Nicaragua is not the absolute best in this category, but it does fall into the really good of this category. Now, what do I mean by location? For us, as I mentioned, our families are predominantly in Texas, and those that are not are in the United States. So for us, location and ability to return to the United States is a very large value, and it means that our families have, and friends, have a much higher likelihood of coming to visit us as well. If it's easy to get back and forth, and it is just over two hours between Miami and Managua, it makes it very, very easy for everybody to go back and forth and visit. And in many cases, we can actually get back to our family in Houston in roughly the same amount of time, maybe just a smidgen longer than it would take for us to drive between our old home in Dallas and our family in Houston. So we haven't actually moved that far away in that regard. Yes, it's an airplane instead of a car, but if only one of us is going, even the price is pretty close to break even along with the time. So that is an extremely big factor. Other countries that would also fit into this uh, reasonably similar uh, location factor is basically everything from Panama to Mexico. So Mexico, Guatemala, Honduras, El Salvador, Nicaragua, Costa Rica, and Panama, and Belize, if we're not ruling out English speaking countries, all can get back to the United States in just a few hours with minimum hops, generally with direct flights. That's a big deal. So all of those would win in this particular category, but given previous things that we had discussed, such as safety, cost of living, uh, et cetera, had ruled out more or less either those to the south or those to the north, leaving Nicaragua really sitting pretty in just the sweet spot where when you take that Venn diagram of all the things that really matter to us, the country that consistently falls into the best or nearly the best position is Nicaragua.
put it all together and Nicaragua is an amazing find for us. Also on our list is important things like weather. Nicaragua is not the best for weather by any stretch. We prefer it much cooler than it is here, but more importantly than it being cool is that it doesn't snow. Coming from New York, we really did not want to experience snow ever again in our lives realistically, and Nicaragua definitely guarantees that we don't have to worry about that. But really, everywhere in the region would be just fine for that. So it's not a big deciding factor, so I don't put that on the list, but it is the kind of thing that makes Nicaragua really nice. We just know we're going to have very similar weather year round, and we love that. Coming from the strong seasons of the north, this is a really big benefit. And you may wonder, because of location, well, is Colombia, Peru, Ecuador, and those countries, are they so far away that they would no longer be a consideration for us with Texas being our main hop location back to the United States? No, we would not rule them out for that reason, but we did put them at a second tier. They're far enough away that generally we're not able to get direct flights. It would be a hop flight, but they are easy to get to with Lima being the final major city that we can fly to easily from the United States. And it is the final city that we can fly to super easily from here. Uh, at low cost. Anything beyond that becomes much more expensive. So those would fall into a second tier with then the Southern Cone or the Bolivias, Paraguays, and those countries. Uh, Brazil falling into a yet another category of extreme effort to be able to fly to and from to get home. It would be multiple hops, much more expensive flights, and so on. Uh, anything from Lima and North was within the cost and time envelope that we considered reasonable, but Panama and North is in the, it's incredibly easy and often just as cheap and easy as flying around the United States category. That made that the absolute best. So putting all seven of those factors together, plus little extra things like we like the food, we like the weather, and the people are wonderful, but people are wonderful everywhere. So that's, you know, it's not that Nicaraguans are so much nicer than people in other countries. People are generally nice, and Nicaragua is simply no exception. Uh, but putting all those things together, Nicaragua just hits our overall sweet spot of the Venn diagram where it all meets. And after having been here in 2015, visiting in 2019, returning in 2021, and being here for two solid years and more, consistently our answer is we are really happy with our decision and we are very thankful that we found Nicaragua. And yes, we have grown and know other places that we would no longer consider as high on our list as we had and other places that we would move much higher on our list than we did. For example, Guatemala is now probably our number two choice, whereas it wasn't really seriously on our radar three, four, five years ago. Uh, so like that kind of change is important. But have we discovered a place that we say, Oh, if only we had known we would have chosen that instead of Nicaragua. No, we haven't found that yet. Might we someday? Of course. Will we move on from Nicaragua and move somewhere else someday? That's possible. But the longer we're here, the more we think this is the home base that we've been searching for. It makes sense for us. The biggest factors that will change is at some point, our kids may not be living with us anymore. Where they decide to move to will obviously be a really big factor for us and, and decide a lot of things. If they decide they want to live in Europe, that's probably going to move us to Europe, And for example. Uh, and when uh, or if we get to the point where I'm able to retire and I'm no longer working in any way, then there is the option of moving to an Argentina or a Chile or Uruguay, for example, or to a Greece uh, where we're time zone or physical location are just really far away. Uh, but as long as we have family back in the States that we need to go back and see, as long as our kids uh, need to be part of that equation, and as long as I need to work, it's going to keep a set of factors that's pretty much going to mean that Nicaragua is our first choice. And right now, just in case we have to move for some reason, our visas get denied. Guatemala is our current second choice. But certainly we have a lot of options in the region, and that's important to remember. Just in the North American or Central American plus North American region, we would easily consider Mexico, El Salvador, uh, Panama, Honduras, even Costa Rica, Costa Rica being so much more expensive that it, and speaking so much English, it lowers it quite a bit. Uh, those are all options. And really, Colombia, Peru, Ecuador, we'd be okay with any of those. Nicaragua just seems to be beating them all for us for the factors that matter to us right now. And perhaps those factors will be the ones that matter to you. But it's important to lay out those features and think about what things you rule out because of your work, family, travel, aspirations, whatever. 
one of the things we don't have as a factor. We don't need to have a business that makes money here in country. If we needed that, this would probably be a really poor choice, at least based on that one factor. Guatemala would be a little bit better. Someplace like Ecuador or Peru might be much better, not Peru today, but in general. Um, I've never seen a car in this road before, by the way, so that's really cool that someone drove by. I didn't know cars went down here. There's a rickety bridge down there that I walked across a few weeks ago on the show. I think he's going to drive the car across that, which would seriously scare me. I was worried walking on it, so kudos to him for uh, seriously brave driving right there. Uh, so that's, I hope, informative why we chose it, why we love it here, why it may or may not be a great choice for you, where we may want to go in the future. The biggest change that I see coming from me is that um, I'm hoping, especially through the use of this channel, that I'm going to be shifting more and more from in-office work to being able to get out and travel as part of the show and my writing and my activities. So I'm really hoping to get around, especially Latin America, but also broader, uh, much, much more than I have been. And Nicaragua does have some negatives from a world travel perspective, but it is not hard to hop from here to some really good international travel destinations like Mexico, Costa Rica, and Panama, all of which have lots of international connections, not very far away from here. So being able to take a bus and go to those other places, also a big deal. And that brings me to another minor point, which is from here, we're in the center of Central America. That means we don't need flights for a lot of things. We can take overland travel, whether it's just taking our own car or just hopping on a bus, and we can go to any of several separate countries uh, and get quite a bit of different culture and exciting, interesting histories and, and experiences without having to go really far. In many ways, Central America operates like a very tiny version of Europe here in Latin America. In South America, it's much harder to get that experience between the mountains and the physical size of the countries. The distance and time you need to travel between places is much greater. If you wanna go from Bolivia to Paraguay, chances are you're gonna be spending a lot of time traveling and a lot more expense. Here, if I wanna to go to Guatemala, I can make a call right now and be in Guatemala tomorrow for $85 at very minimal effort that easy. So I really appreciate having that as well, but it is not a factor that made us choose Nicaragua. It's simply a benefit now that we're here. Thanks for joining me. Please remember to like and subscribe. If you have any questions, and I, you better on this particular episode, there's so much to have questions about, get down there in the comments, scroll down, ask away, leave your comments. What are your experiences? What factors matter to you? Do you want to know how those factors may or may not play into Nicaragua? Let me know. I want to know what you're thinking, what you want to know, all that stuff. Thanks for joining me. If you'd like to share on social media, I would appreciate that a lot. If you want to support this channel, please do. You can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. That is how you directly support the channel and make all of this possible. Help us live here in Nicaragua. Help me film the show and make these episodes for you guys and answer your questions uh, and explore more of the country, of course. And uh, uh, so I'm just going to tell real quickly about my day. Um, today, Steve, who watches the channel and has for more than a year, uh, is on our trivia team at Via Via back when we did trivia there. We haven't done that in a while. Uh, we got together this afternoon at Dr. Coffee in Sutiava. If you're going to be in town and you want to get coffee, uh, I think Dr. Coffee might be my favorite coffee shop. Not to, we got some good coffee shops here in Leon, but not a ton. We just have a small number of pretty good ones. Uh, but Dr. Coffee in Sutiava may be my favorite because it is in no way in the center of the city. It is way out in the barrio. It is on Ruben Dario, which is the main east west road to the city so that it's kind of like it's in the city you're not completely remote but it's way out in the barrio like super far west and nearly to Mercadito. and it's a really nice fancy upscale coffee shop and it has sandwiches and stuff with a beautiful outdoor area and it's just it's really nice but being able to do that in the barrio is fantastic so get out there and support our peeps in Sutiava if you're looking for coffee in the Leon area Dr. Coffee. But anyway, Steve and I got together there with Juan, who's an artist in Managua, and he was showing me some artwork. We were talking about some things, and Steve dropped off some tempeh that he made for me. And uh, as we're having this conversation that I'm recording, my wife is actually using that tempeh to make homemade bacon. She's, it's, we've never done that before, so we'll see how it works, but that's the project she's working on right now. So thanks, Steve. We are putting the tempeh to good work as we speak. That's it for today. Do all the things. I will see all of you tomorrow. <laughs>